Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we went to the abandoned ship, did everything there was to do here, and now we have come to Shoal Cave, north of Moss Deep City. And in this episode, well, we're going to be exploring Shoal Cave, which is north of Moss Deep City. So, you need to come here twice. There's two times that you'll be, ne be needed need to come here. Bleh because there's different items available to you when the tide is high and when the tide is low. So you'll need to come here, wait four hours, and then come back, essentially. Now, as far as I know, there's no legitimate way you can change the clock in Emerald. I know that there was that code you could put in on the title screen in Gold and Silver, but in Crystal, no such thing existed. And as far as I know, there was no way that you could change the clock again until Diamond and Pearl. And in Diamond and Pearl, they were really really clever making it so that whenever 24 hour events would happen you could only do it until 24 hours after your clock had last been changed if you did change it so kind of cool though I guess it was kind of a clever way of doing things it was so you could transfer multiple Pokemon with the uh, Pal Park though but. going on though here in Shoal Cave there is actually one new Pokemon that we can find oh but really quick here we have a Shoal Shell there's four of these located here. You want to get, obviously, all four of them, so we're going to go on a hunt for those. But anyway, the one new Pokemon we can find here is Sfeel, which is the most common Pokemon here by far. This is a water ice type, which is decent in the way of type coverage, I suppose. It has... Uh, ice isn't a bad offensive type, it's just that defensively ice isn't so good because ice is weak to a lot of stuff, but being a water type, it does cancel out some of those ice weaknesses. Now... Downside to us uh, feel is that it takes until level 32 to evolve once. Here we have rare candy. Cool. cool. But to evolve once more into its final evolution, Wall Rain, it needs to be in the 40s. That can be a bit of a pain to raise up if you're not very patient. And as many of you know, I don't have a lot of patience. I am usually very fast paced and really, really just like to get stuff done, like you might have seen in my videos. Walrein is a mixed attacker. It's not the most spectacular mixed attacker, but it is one nonetheless, and it's got a f good offensive type coverage with water and ice, so it's decent, I suppose. But that's really all I have to talk about about that. There is one other Pokemon we can find here, but not unless the tide is low. And I know what you're thinking about Sveal, by the way. Just when you thought there'd never be an ice type in all of Hoenn, we finally have... One and it's only half ice type. I know, it's ridiculous. Not counting Snowcloud cast form, this is the first time we have even had the possibility of getting an ice type, and we're seven badges in. Really, I understand this is a tropical region, and thus there's not going to be many ice Pokemon. But come on, did you really have to neglect that a type for so long? I mean, heck, we've had dragon types already quite a few even and we still haven't had this now the thing is we can't finish everything up here quite yet we're gonna need to come back at a later time so that I can get the other items that are located here because well we can't find any shoal salts while the tide is high plus that one other Pokemon can't be found there yet until the tide is low so we're gonna be continuing on with our journey across the sea and I think I want to get some super repels really quick before we take off because I'm starting to run low all right, I went ahead and I bought the less cost-effective Max Repels because I'm lazy and this store does not sell Super Repels, so I'm gonna use my Rare Candy on a cool tent because he's far from a level and is the lowest level Pokemon on our team all at the same time, so that's pretty good. Wait, okay, she'll, she'll, I thought that was she'll salt for a second. We're gonna be continuing our journey across the sea, though, but while we're doing that, there's something interesting about the Shoal Salt and the Shoal Shells that I wanna talk about. It is yet another plausible reason why a remake of Ruby and Sapphire might be coming soon. In black and white, not only was the dive ball restored, but the Shoal Salt and Shoal Shell are both in the game, but serve no actual purpose. They're both normally obtainable uh, near Undella Bay, yet they don't serve any actual purpose in the game. And stop saying bird Pokemon, they're flying Pokemon. Bird Pokemon was an abandoned type, but anyway. That is the thing that's kind of unusual, is that you can obtain them in the game, but they don't actually do anything. And the only game in which they've ever actually done something was to construct a shell bell inside of Shoal Cave. So I thought that was really interesting and makes it pretty obvious that they have intentions to remake Ruby and Sapphire 
and having them be cross compatible with black and white. So, kind of an interesting thing that's going on there. I don't know. Maybe they're being a little bit more obvious than they were with gold and silver, because in gold and silver it was really subtle stuff, but with this ruby and sapphire thing, there's some things in the game's code that are just really undeniable. Granted, though, Diamond and Pearl did have Johto as a location uh, for, you know, and there was like no way you could bring Pokemon over from Johto, though, so that was kind of obvious. But the ironic thing is, is that once those games actually came out, if you transfer Pokemon from Johto, it didn't actually lose Johto as a location. But I'm rambling a bit here and getting a bit off subject. We're in a double battle, we're fighting a main trick and a Skarmory, and you just paralyzed both of my Pokemon! And, uh, <laughs> oh, jeez, I ran out of air. I was talking for so long, and then I started shouting, so I ran out of air. That's saying quite a bit, though, because if you haven't guessed by now by my loudness, I have really good lung capacity. I can store so much air in my lungs all at one time and just talk for the longest time without running out of air. But, it whoa! Um, Armageddon much? Fitting, because this video is going up to the 12th, which I don't really believe where it's going to end, you know, the next few months, though. But some people do. Believe what you want to. We have an Ally Noon here, which is going to get Blaze kicked to the face. You know, something that I'm kind of surprised they haven't done yet. I'm kind of surprised the dual type moves don't exist. You know, Blaze Kick could be like fire and fighting, Ice Punch could be ice and fighting. I mean, I understand that it might be a bit excessive, you know, and it might just be kind of a bit too complicated for the game to still be sim simplified enough for kids to play. But um, that's one move that I'm kind of surprised they haven't done yet is making dual type moves. I guess the move, the uh, calculation could be a bit weird though, like in how you would calculate the damage though, but I'm pretty sure there's some way they could figure it out, and I'm going to use a cherry berry here. So, these two were guarding an item, let's see what that is. Now, a rare candy again? Wow, we're getting a lot of rare candies. Uh, Pandora, who's in the PC, is still level 39 though, so let's look at who is the weakest. You're pretty far, you're pretty far. You're pretty far, you're really close, and you're kind of far. I'm gonna use it on... I'll go ahead and use it on Kappa, I guess. But, uh, Kappa's not gonna be seeing much action because, simply put, it only has one Grass-type move and only has five PP, which I could use a PP up on, to be fair. I mean, I do have a PP max in the PC that I could use on that to get it to 8 PP, which probably would be the better move in all honesty because I'm not really seeing much use in these water areas because of it, but I don't know. In the meantime, let's start surfing down a bit further though. So while we're crossing the ocean, I should mention, uh, you can go ahead and dive down should you wish. You'll go down into some chasms. When you're down here, you won't find any, you won't find any wild Pokemon. You have this nice, relaxing music. You move slower underwater. Don't worry, you never need to come up for air because you can breathe underwater apparently. But if you want to use this trick, I guess you could say, to not have to use repels, you can. You will not run into any wild Pokemon while you're traveling underwater. Here we're on Route 128. Really cool number. But I didn't realize she was gonna turn away. All right, done with that battle. That was not a battle that I was trying to get into. Interestingly, this route has a few things about it that are kind of unique. Right here we have a dive spot that is only a few spaces big, right in the middle of this ring. If we dive down here, there's actually a really good item that you want to pick up. Which is right here. It's on this rock that's below you that you don't even think you can interact with. And you get a protein from that, so we're going to use that right away. I'm gonna throw that on Teddy, I guess, just because it's the, that Hyper Beam strategy and me liking that so much. I think I have a Carbos in my inventory, though, but I want to save that for Pandora, just because Pandora needs additional speed whenever we get her back out of the PC. Now, as far as I know, there's three items in this route that you will not find in Ruby and Sapphire, but you will find them in Emerald. All three of them being Heart Scales, and they're all hidden throughout here. Let's see. They're anywhere around here. I'm trying to see if I can locate where they are, though, because I know that they're here, but I'll be honest, I played Sapphire a lot more than I played Emerald back in the day. I just know that they exist, but I don't know exactly where they are, so that's kind of a problem. Can't go beyond there. It's like, oh, no, I can't sidle along that, though, but if I go beyond that, the game would crash, so it doesn't matter, so. There is one other dive spot in this area. It's right above where that fisherman is, and you can get... Actually, let me just show it. 
It's always in my style to show things. I'm like, oh, I have to get 100%, and I have to show each thing that's, you know, for 100%. I have to go do this. I will say that, though. I'm sure that there's a few items that I've missed here and there, but this is actually the first time that I've made, like, a serious attempt to, like, learn where all the items are. And, again, if you check this rock that's below you, you can get a pearl. Kind of cool. Let's go ahead and dive out. Uh, dive out. Let's go to the surface. By the way, I like. I hope that you've been liking the name of that, the original cool tent that I changed, though, but... I'm not even making good speech patterns anymore. Let me... Alright, well, I dove down, and I looked around, but I couldn't find those heart scales that I know are around here. But, oh well, it's fine. Well, I'll probably come back for them another time. I don't know. People will remember that, though, so maybe I'll regret saying that eventually, though. But there is something unique about Route 129 that I really, really want to tell you guys about. There's no items here, but there is a Pokemon here we can't find on any other route, and that is Waylord. There is a 1% chance of finding this thing, and if you don't want to grow a Whalemur to level 40, it is the only place you can find a Whalemur. Be absolutely sure it's Route 129, not Route 128 or any other route on this water. It's only on Route 129. Because... Unless you want to train a Whalemur up to level 40, which more power to you if you do. I'm more impatient than that, and I don't like using my experience on Pokemon that I'm not going to use. So, if you haven't guessed by now, I'm probably going to just off-screen this area for a while and look for a Whalemur. Because there is a side quest coming up. It may be a side quest, but it is one that you really, really want to participate in. Trust me on that. Where you need a Whalemur to be able to do it. It sounds really stupid. But you do. So, just come here. Waylord can be any level between 25 and 30, though. But so can any other Pokemon on this route. So I can't suggest any tips with using repels to be able to find it easier or anything like that. I'm going to be going through here without repels for a time until I get to Route 130. Just because I want to see if I can maybe find one on screen. Perfectly, I guess, perfectly pure. I can't really think of another way to say it, though. But just... Without really trying, I would like to see if I could find one. And we're on Route 1... Okay. So Route 130, I don't really think has much of anything special on it either. It's just yet another water route. Get used to these. You're going to be going through them like nuts. When I said that the last fourth of the game is fighting almost exclusively water Pokemon and crossing the sea, going into water-themed dungeons like the Shoal Cave is for the most part, yeah, this is what I was talking about. Kind of weird. Route 131! I fell for that twice and on the exact same type of trainer. Alright, let's not fall for that again. Now, there is an area through here if we were to go in there. But there's nothing there for us yet. If you want to go there, there's a lot of really powerful Pokemon you can fight in the wild there, which could be useful for grinding. I guess, even though wild Pokemon are not in it, mainly what you want to grind off of, because you can rematch the trainers in this game. But without further ado, we are here in Pacific Log Town, a floating town. Also a really unique idea that I like a lot, and I like how even though your feet are in the water, you can't run into wild Pokemon here. But now that we've arrived in Pacific Log Town, I say that we end this off here. So next time on Pokemon Emerald, we're going to be checking out the town and hopefully seeing if there's any truth to what May was telling us. See you guys then.